Okay, guys, we're going to have a look at another option here from the Close Guard. What we're going to focus on is starting to attach another position to something we've worked on already. When we try to cross the arm, we have a few issues and problems that the person presents because we know their motivation. They don't want to give us weak positions. They don't want to fall on the bottom. They don't want to tap or submit to you. So they're going to start to defend that with all they have, all they understand. So again, we're going to go with the same setup of crossing one arm to both arms to the same side by crossing one arm to the opposite side of our body. So again, from here, I go underneath on the inside and I make a figure four grip on my hands. So even if Nick here has a really, really powerful grip, as I start to pull my arm away, both arms away from my hip, it bends his wrist and weakens his hand and I'm able to break his grip. Two arms are stronger than one. Once we're here, again, we're going to push and pull to flare his elbow so it's much more difficult for him to just strip his grip immediately. I put my le left leg on the ground, the same side I control the arm. I hip up, swivel my hips to the outside, and I drop his hip on the uh, sorry, my, his elbow on the opposite side of my hip so that I can block his back with my upper body and chest. I break him down even further and close my legs. Now, a lot of the time when we start to reposition our whole body for the back control, he's able to create a little bit of space because when I move, the tension reduces a little bit. There's a little bit of tension that disappears and I'm not able to stay here and hug him as tight as possible because I need to move to re for the um, back position, to reposition for the back position. But when I do move, he has the opportunity to start to pull his shoulder over my chest and now it's much more difficult to move. But the great thing about this is because his arm is still crossed and it's quite difficult for him to post on this side to his shoulder, if I keep him very tight to my chest and then I use my legs slightly differently, I'm able to throw his back to the floor and come all the way onto the top position. Now we're gonna focus on the pendulum type movement with our hips. The most important detail here is actually the direction in which we throw our legs or the force we create with our legs. Normally, all right, when we go straight to the side here, he's still able to post with his back leg, all right, and we have some struggle here. But if I'm able to force this knee towards his top shoulder, he's always gonna fall onto the floor, all right, because he has no option of basing in that direction because I control his arm again across my body. Now, I use force of my legs in opposing directions. This bottom leg slides back to his feet. This one is kicking the knee all right, towards the top shoulder. Now his shoulder touches onto the floor. I'm able to control all the way on top with really powerful control in the mouth.